I picked up this DRO kit off of eBay recently. It comes with a DRO, both of the linear scales, various bits of bracketry, nuts and bolts, some covers, the instructions, all the little bits and pieces. And in this video, I thought I'd show you how I fitted it to the lathe. And this is the lathe that we're going to be fitting it to. It's a Harrison VS330TR. It's a nice machine, and I have it here in my home workshop running off of a rotary converter. I'll start by fitting the DRO display itself. It's just a basic two axis unit, and it comes with this handy little bracket which should make fitting it a little bit easier. I'd like to get the DRO mounted somewhere around here like this. And there's a nice big flat bit on the back of the gearbox I can mount this arm on. I have to be a little bit careful where I drill the holes and try not to go all the way through. I think that should just about do it. I started by drilling the threads out of the mounting bracket. The bracket's designed to have the bolts go through a plate and then be screwed into the bracket, whereas I'd like to put the bolts through the bracket and then screw them into the back of the machine. I could then mark out the bolt pattern and very carefully drill blind holes into the back of the gearbox. I don't want to go all the way through as the gearbox is full of oil. I set the clutch on the combi drill nice and low so that when the tap hit the bottom of the blind hole it didn't snap the tap. I then just screwed the mounting plate down with some cap head screws. The arm was then reassembled, there's a little spacer that goes in the bracket to stop it getting crushed and then a lock nut that goes on the bottom. There's also a locking bolt on the top of the arm just to stop it from swinging around. On the bottom of the screen there's a little mounting plate and again this just gets fastened down with some cap head screws. The DRO screen goes onto the arm like this and then just gets locked in place with a little nut on the bottom. The Z axis scale has to be fitted on the back of the machine. That's because there isn't space on the front. So I pulled out the swarf tray so I could get access to the job. The kit came with various brackets which I then set about modifying to make sure that it all fit together nicely on this particular machine. Now what is it they say? Measure twice, cut once isn't it? Well, I did that and then after cutting the bracket in half that was perfectly adequate for the job, I welded it back together again. I feel like this could have all been avoided if I just read the instructions. Here's the completed bracket for the Z-axis reed head. Fortunately, the slots in the bracket lined up with a couple of existing holes in the saddle. I could then set about marking out for the linear scale. I centre punched and then drilled and tapped the holes for the screws that would mount the scale. The scale was then passed through the reed head bracket and nipped in place at the back of the machine. You'll notice that the hole is slightly slotted. This is just to ensure that you can adjust it to get it parallel with the bed of the machine. At the front of the machine, the bed steps in slightly. This leaves a small gap behind where the screw needs to go. It's important that this gap gets filled before the scale gets tightened down, otherwise the scale will bend. I just used a little stack of repair washers. I could then get it roughly level and nip the screw down. To check that the scale was parallel with the bed, I just set up a dial indicator on the carriage and drove it along the length of the machine. With the scale now parallel to the z-axis, the reed head can be attached to the bracket which is attached to the carriage. Again, it's just some little cap head screws holding everything together. The slotted holes in the reed head bracket allow it to be pushed up until there's no play left in the system. Then the screws can be done up. Once they're tight, this little piece of red plastic can be removed and that ensures the correct gap between the scale and the reed head. Plug the scale into the back of the DRO, and that's the Z-axis working. The kit came with a protective cover for the scale. Before installing it, I just ran a small bead of sealant along the top edge. It was then just screwed to the bed of the machine, being careful to make sure that there was clearance to the reed head bracket along its full travel. With the Z-axis complete, it's onto the X-axis. I'd like to mount the scale somewhere around here on the cross slide. The only slight problem is this V-groove in the back of the cross slide. It means I don't have a flat surface to screw into. So what I'm going to have to do is make a little angle bracket that screws into the top of the cross slide and then drops down behind the scale and I can connect to that. 
To make this bracket, I just used a little bit of 20mm by 20mm aluminium angle. I removed the compound to make marking out a little bit easier. The new bracket needs a relief cut in it to clear the back of the compound, and to do that I needed to make a special tool first. It's just a little compass that locates on the pivot pin for the compound slide. I could then use the compass with a scribe to mark out the arc for the clearance cut for the compound. A decent jigsaw with a fine tooth woodworking blade makes light work of the aluminium angle. A few licks with a decent quality half round file soon gets rid of all of the saw marks. This is going to be the vertical face of the angle bracket, and this is a mounting plate that comes with the x-axis scale that would normally be mounted this way round. However, what I'm going to do is put countersunk screws in from this side, and then put the nuts in these slotted holes. These two holes are for mounting the scale. They're just below the centre line, but I want them just above, so that means this is going to have to go the other way round. The only problem with this is that now the holes for the protective cover are in the bottom, so they're going to have to be re-drilled in the top. If I've lost you, don't worry, you'll see how it all goes together in a minute. I started by drilling and countersinking the holes in the angle bracket to connect it to the backing plate. I used a little stainless steel M5 countersunk screw and a nylock nut to secure the two parts together. Here's what the connection looks like. The nut is under flush so that it doesn't hit the back of the scale once it's mounted to the backing plate. I then drilled the holes that would mount the bracket to the cross slide. You can also see here the new hole for the protective cover. Time for a quick test fit before we go too much further. Check the clearance cut against the compound. I could then transfer the mounting screw locations onto the cross slide. I then tap the holes M4. I chose to do this by hand rather than with the combi drill as this is a lot less risky. I had to use the combi drill earlier because there wasn't enough clearance to get in with a normal tap wrench. The scale just screws down to the backing plate with a screw at each end. Just like the z-axis, the holes are slotted to allow for some adjustment. And here it is, the new angle bracket with the backing plate and the scale mounted to it. On the x-axis, the scale moves with the cross slide and the reed head stays still. So this is the opposite way round to the z-axis. To do this, the kit comes with this little angle bracket. One side screws onto the reed head, and the other side screws onto the carriage. There wasn't a lot of room between the ways on the machine to get in with a regular combi drill, so I ended up using the little pneumatic right angle drill again. This thing gets you out of so many awkward situations it's ridiculous. Again, due to the lack of clearance, I couldn't get in with a regular tapping wrench, so I ended up using a little adjustable spanner on the end of the tap. It was slow, but it worked really well. With all the mounting points done, I could get it all positioned and screw it in place. Here it is, all done up in place. I used the same technique with the plastic spacer to set the reed head clearance. Just like on the z-axis, I want to try and keep the dirt away from the scale, so a little bead of sealant along the top edge before the cover goes on. The cover just screws down into the two new holes that I had to drill in the backing plate. I used button head screws here rather than cap heads, just so I had a little bit more clearance to the bottom of the compound. And that's the completed x-axis. At some point I'm going to have to make a little stop so that I don't bang into it when I'm bringing the tailstock forward. I went round with a few cable ties and p-clips to just tidy up the wiring. I'd rather the cabling didn't just get dragged around the bottom of the machine and tangled up in all of the swarf. A quick test of the x-axis, and it's good to go. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I think the next video is probably going to be on the lathe as well, so hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.